Hello and welcome back to part two. On part one, we showed how to create a new boundary in a field that had no guidance lines. We created some guidance lines, steered to them, and recorded our boundary while auto steering. In this video, we're gonna show you headland creation from the boundary. A little bit of a swap in methodology on the 13.4 Precision IQ firmware and above. In the past, we used to create a headland and the boundary would be created from the headlands. In this instance, we're actually creating a boundary and then headlands from that existing boundary. So since I have a boundary created from our last video, I'm gonna go into specialty guidance, tap on the headland creation, and I'm gonna choose the boundary that we just created. And I'm gonna tap on generate headlands. Now there are a few parameters that we need to fill out to create these headlands. The first item is circuits. It defaults to two. I'm actually gonna change that to one circuit since I have a fairly small field area here. The swath width is automatically going to default to your implement width. Um, so in this case, it's a 10 foot implement width. We can change that if we need to. And finally is turn radius. Once again, this is going to be a pre-populated value that helps with the, the turn radius on the headland circuits. We're gonna leave that at 32.81 feet right now. The last thing is a drop down for infill selection. We can choose an existing guidance line that we have already created inside this field. We did those two guidance lines when we were creating our boundary, or we can select no infill. I'm gonna select that second A plus line that I created. I'm gonna tap create, and it automatically creates our headland circuits. So we see that one headland circuit. If I would drive into the middle of the field, we would also see the infill for that headland type. Now the really nice thing is if I exit back out of here and I change my implement width to something wider, let's say this field cultivator for instance, when I go back into the run screen, that 10 foot width for headlands is not going to be um, the, the right dimensions for my new implement, which is a field cultivator. And so when I actually swap through and select my headland, it actually automatically changes the width of that headland for me to fit my field cultivator or to fit whatever implement I have selected. That automatically does that because I've already selected for it to automatically complete that task. Once again, if you go into the guidance editor settings, um, you'll see down here at the bottom, I have the auto adjust inner boundary turned on currently. So it doesn't even notify me anymore. It just automatically goes to adjusting that headland for whatever implement type I have. If you don't want that to be automatic, you can turn that slider off. And every time you have a different implement size than what your headland width is currently set at, it will ask you, would you like to adjust your headland width for the implement that you have attached? You can accept that or you can deny that at that point in time. Really nice feature, makes it really nice to have just, in this case, one headland with, if you wanted a, a single circuit headland, you just have to have one headland guidance type and it will adjust for every implement in your fleet. On my own farm, I typically have um, two or three of these headland type lines within each field. So I'll have one with one circuit, another one with two circuits, maybe one with three or four circuits on it for swathing hay. And anytime I switch to a different implement size, those automatically get updated. Where in the past, we would have to have a, a different headland path for each number of circuits we wanted and for each implement that we were going to use on that headland. Makes it really nice and easy and simple. Hopefully that makes sense. In the future videos, we're gonna talk about freeform guidance, but that wraps it up for the initial boundary and headland pass.